Hello, I'm Tom from Gear for Music and I'm joined by Marcus from Daddario. Hello. And we are here to have a look through the Daddario orchestral range of accessories. So not only are these going to help your instrument stay safe and maintained, but also they can actually enhance your sound and we're going to find out why. If you enjoy these videos, don't forget to click like and subscribe and comment below. So thank you for joining us, Marcus. So we've got so many different things here to, to cram into this video. So if we get started right away and sure. at the micro violin tuner. So how is this better than other tuners in my experience on the market? So the, the micro violin tuner, there's also a viola version with a wider clamp. So it fits onto the shoulder of the instrument and has these soft rubber feet. So what this means is you're able to see um, the display clearly. You can adjust it around left to right and it actually displays the pitch that you're, that you're playing, that you're producing. If you're hitting the center of the note, you can see the note. If you're flat, you get bars to the left or if you're sharp, there are bars to the right. Uniquely, what this tuner does, it actually has a tiny piezo uh, transducer inside. So it's picking up the vibration of the wood and um, not just the sound around it. So if you're, if you're in a group lesson, for example, it will show your pitch. Um, yes. That's great. So you're obviously not going to sort of pick up other people's pitches as easily. Yeah. And also, you know, you see a lot of these sort of clip-on tuners and they are designed for headstocks and things like that. So trying to clip that onto the scroll could damage the scroll. And also if you've got one of the sort of standalone tuners, you're not having to try and juggle to try and play exactly. and stay in tune. So that's ideal having it there so you can just see what's happening and really clear display. So there's also a cello bass version here as well, which is fantastic. So next up, we've got a small instrument humidifier. So why would someone want a humidifier and how is it going to help your instrument? So it's really about <clears throat> maintaining your instrument. So in, in colder weather, you're probably going to have your central heating on. Um, what this can do is uh, dry out the wood of your instrument. Oh, in, that just leads to cracks, does it? That yes, just makes me shudder, it, it even being happen. a wind player, thinking of clarinets breaking exactly. and cracking. So, you know, string instruments is a prime example where that can happen. So the idea with this product is to maintain the, the moisture content in, in your case to give it a nice um, environment for your instrument to live in. It's actually this small plastic box here that has small perforated holes. And then inside we have this sponge. So you would run this under the tap, squeeze out the excess water, pop it back in, and then you would fit this just inside your case. You can either Velcro it in, we have sticky back Velcro patches, or it can just be loose in one of the internal pockets. So ideal just to make sure that your wood doesn't crack great. Exactly. I know, I know one of the sort of scare stories I hear yeah. is people putting instrument cases next to radiators oh, no. and, oh <laughs> no, that just gives me nightmares. So yeah. we'll move on quickly from that one. So we've got the micro polishing cloth. So yes, it's great to help maintain your instrument, but it can also help with your sound as well, can't it really? It can. So a common problem with strings is that they have too much rosin building up on them, which is actually dulling the sound. The best advice I can give to, to get more out of your strings and for them to last longer is to clean them after every time you play and the microfiber cloth is the perfect So it just helps for them resonate a bit more, doesn't it? So they're not sort exactly. of stifling the strings. And obviously if it's going to elongate the length that you can use your strings for, saves you money in the long run, ching ching, more money in your pocket, less spent on yeah. strings. So great. And obviously with rosin, you can get a lot of rosin dust as well, can't you? You can, yes. <laughs> so obviously sort of making sure your violin <clears throat> looks great Keep as well. So next up, we've got the bow grip. So this is great for players of all instruments, really, sort of string instruments. Yeah, so the, the bow grip here, um, we do a large version and a medium sized version. And the, the large version is for a full size or three quarter size bow, this being a full size. And then the medium version uh, fits a half and quarter size bow. And that's for violin, viola or cello. So great for kids if they're picking up a, an instrument at a younger age as well. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, the, the main aim really is for beginners to aid with finger placement so they can see where to put their fingers on the bow. Also, beginners can have a tendency to overly grip the bow. They don't want to drop it, which is understandable, but this gives you a softer feel so you don't have to really grip too tight. And it'll also improve your technique. So if you're putting too much pressure everything through the bow, it'll have an effect on the strings and the sound that you produce as well. Yeah. And the other added benefit, if anyone has a repetitive strain injury or tendonitis, arthritis, in their right hand, um, they won't have to grip the bow as strongly, so it can make playing more comfortable 
for them too. So making string instruments more accessible for a range of different people, so that's sort of a great way into that, certainly. Yeah. And then next up, we've got the mute. So I can see you've got one on the violin in front of us. I do. So this is our, our mute called the Spectre Mute, um, actually designed by a violinist who played in the Chicago Symphony for 25 years. Unlike many other mutes, it doesn't rattle around. So there's no kind of extra noise when you're playing. It just slides on very simply, and then to disengage, you just slide it off. We do a copper color version, which is shown here, and also a black version, so you can match the, the fittings of your instrument. Quick and easy to just engage and disengage, you say. So a, a lot of them are these rubber mutes that can be a bit cumbersome and trying to get those in place at the same time, especially if you need to go from muted playing to unmuted, yeah. it can take a bit of a while. So just slide on, yeah. easy. Uh, and of course, you can leave it on the instrument at all times, so you're less likely to lose your mute. <laughs> That's great. So I can also see we've got an end pin anchor, although this isn't necessarily for violins, no. <laughs> but it does come in helpful for a lot of other string instruments and more. Yeah, exactly. So the, the end pin anchor here um, would be for, for a cello or double bass or any woodwind instrument that has so a spike. Like a bass clarinet. I've, I've got a Barry Sachs with a spike on, for example, as well. Exactly. So it obviously protects the floor from the spike, but it crucially it stops your instrument from slipping out underneath. So again, you're not having to worry about the sound being compromised by having to move around, so it can actually really focus on your playing and know it's going to be sturdy instead. Exactly. And it's really transportable. You can keep it in your instrument bag and um, yes, you don't have to tie it onto a chair or anything. It's, it's good to go. Great. So I can see quite a lot of rosins at the end of the table. So can you give us a bit of a breakdown on what different rosins are? Because there's light ones, dark ones, so yes. <laughs> which play would lend itself, you know, which rosin would be better? So, in general, the difference between light and dark rosin is the, the melting point. So, light rosin is harder, so that would suit a violin in general. Uh, dark rosin has more, it's more sticky, um, lower melting point, so it gives more grip to the string. So, it lends itself to bigger strings. So, viola, cello, and double bass strings, for example, would benefit from a, a dark rosin over a light. So, that's great. So, at least it gives an idea of which rosin's best to choose. But there are quite a few different ones in front of us which are light rosins as well. So, yes. can you give us a bit of a, a talk through the range? Yeah, sure. So, there's our, our natural rosin at, at the front here. And this is really perfect for a, for a student, for a beginner. Maybe they, they had a rosin that came with their violin or viola or cello. It's a great replacement, um, long lasting, but also known for a low dust formula. So not too much dust comes off whilst you're, whilst you're playing. That's great. So I can also see there's a grip in front of you as well with one of those rosins in. Yes, so the, the rosin guard actually comes with the natural rosin included. Um, so you can replace the rosin in the guard. And what the guard does is gives you a lot more grip, first of all. So if you've got small hands as well, it can help with, you know, applying the rosin to the bow. And as you mentioned, similar to the, the bow grip for those that do find it harder to grip things. So at least it's sort of bigger, it's rubber, it's quite exactly. um, easy to hold on to. But the, I mean, the main benefit is that it protects your rosin from, from falls. So if, if you drop your rosin, it's less likely to smash into a thousand so pieces. So many rosin you yeah. see smash into pieces, so it's certainly going to protect that. Exactly. And then for, for the teachers um, out there, it also has magnets in, in the back of the case. So if you're teaching in a classroom with a whiteboard, perhaps, you can always have a rosin on the whiteboard ready at hand Quick, for anyone, easy access. Yeah, anyone who's forgotten their rosin, there, there's no excuse. So there's also a third box next to the light and dark rosin, isn't there, just on the end? Yes. So this is our clarity rosin, which I'll get out to show you. And you can see it's completely clear, looks like a mint, but I, I wouldn't recommend licking it. Um, but this is actually for anyone who's allergic to rosin. So it's a hyperallergenic rosin formula. All other traditional rosins are made from tree sap, normally pine tree sap combined with beeswax. So if you have a you know, hay fever or you're allergic to... Lots any of, of allergies there, you know, it, it can really cause quite a exactly. lot of issues for people. It's not something you necessarily think of either as a rosin. You know, you think going out into the wild and, you know, sort of getting mm. all this sort of pollen, but actually by having the rosin there, it's not something you think. Yeah, again, so this works really well for violin, viola or cello as well. So anyone with an allergy, this is the rosin for you. So again, making playing more accessible to more people. So yep. that's ideal. That's it. Um, I can also see some smaller blocks just on the end. Yeah, so these are quite a new addition uh, for us at Dario. We have a dark version here, um, a light version, and you can see they come in this little wooden channel these are great for fractional size instruments. So if you have a small instrument with a very small case, 
often you, you're tight for, for space for your shoulder rest, for your mute, for other accessories, including rosin. So this fits really well with a fractional size instrument. And I think as well, it's great to fit in your case if you need to. And also if you're prone to dropping your rosin and smashing into lots of small pieces, you've got a small piece there, it's a bit more budget friendly as yes. well, and it's protected by the wood. So yeah. you've got quite a few different advantages of going for that one. Yeah. And there's also a few different Kaplan rosins. Yes. So Kaplan is your more premium range. Isn't exactly, it? yeah. So again, we have our Kaplan strings and we also produce Kaplan rosin. Um, so our Artcraft rosin here, obviously light and dark versions available. Um, this version, this cake here, comes on a little cloth um, sheet and then it comes in a felt pouch. So it's um, the more traditional, more traditional way that people are used to seeing rosins. Yeah, exactly. It's easy to apply and, you know, it gives it enough protection, you know, for most, most uses. But going a stage further, we developed our premium uh, dark and light rosin in the Kaplan range, which come in this little box. I think they're really quite cute, really sort of nice little cases, keeps it all compact. Exactly. Especially, you know, for cellists out there, if you're keeping your rosin in a case, it can rattle around. It, it's prone to cracking or chipping. But this, you can just open it with one hand. It's spring-loaded. So if you've got your bow, your <laughs> instrument in another hand, you can just do that one-handed. That's it. You can apply the rosin evenly. And one key feature is a little dial that we have at the bottom. So you can rotate the rosin round to avoid getting a groove in one place on the rosin. So again, see that very often, especially with the straight ones, you sort of, yes. you sort of see that sort of channel being carved. And then when they're dropped there, they will break <laughs> very easily. So this gives you nice even wear um, yeah, and good protection. That's great. So there's so many different accessories here. So whether you want to stay in tune, whether you want to sort of care for your instrument and actually help the strings, whether you want to sort of improve your grip and your technique, there's so many different things here. And obviously the importance of having rosin on your bow and actually picking the right rosin for you. So thank you very much, Marcus, for joining us. And as I say, if you've enjoyed this video, please click like, subscribe and comment below. Thanks for watching.